I've got the contents of the Norton Navigator gearbox here and I'm hoping I might be able to show and demonstrate uh, what's, what's wrong with it or at least what's causing it to uh, jump out of second gear. Now, I've been through all the motions of the selectors and everything and um, I've found out where second gear is and when it's engaged or supposed to be engaged and it's when this gear moves as close as possible to this gear. When these two engage you're in second gear but the engagement isn't very deep at all. I'll try and demonstrate. If I spin the main shaft I'll have to move the selector mechanism there. Now then, that we are now in second gear. We'll go down here. That's first. That's neutral. And that is second. But that is as deep as the engagement can go. Now look at that gap there. And the edges of the dogs are rounded off, but I'm convinced that those gears should be getting closer to each other than that. And I'm beginning to suspect possibly a bent selector fork, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to look into it, or perhaps there's a shimming issue on the gears. But it's not even sort of going halfway, I wouldn't have thought, as close to the other gear to get good engagement and give second gear. So I'm going to be looking into that. The, uh, the gearbox itself comes out of the uh, engine casing as a complete unit but the only thing that didn't work and I'll go over there to demonstrate it in a moment is the uh, little spindle that carries the selector forks let's get some light on it if we can stayed inside the engine casing so when I pulled the end plate out with all the gears and shafts one of the selector forks dropped off anyway, which wasn't very good. But I found out that the uh, selector spindle that remained in the cases, the engine cases, even when I got hold of it with, uh, dare I say it, mole grips or vice grips if you prefer, end on, um, I thought it might have just slid out, but uh, it's stuck in there pretty tightly. So what I'm going to do, I've got a suitable sized mandrel there that I've pushed through for the selector forks to run on and I'm going to use that when I reassemble it so that it can meet up end to end with the spindle that's still in the cases and hopefully I'll just be able to slide the selector forks back onto their proper um, spindle which we'll see I'll go up to the bike and hopefully we'll see all I had to do on the primary side was strip the primary drive down. I didn't have to take this casing off, no need for that. And the main shaft just pulled straight out. And around here, there's the pretty much empty gearbox casing. Now it looks like, thankfully, the main shaft sleeve gear or top gear in there looks very good. Um, that, that is the uh, rod. That the selector forks run on and that below it is the spring plunger for the indents in the selector stop mechanism that uh, gives you your clicks from one gear to the next so nothing too scary in there and um, quite, quite nicely laid out and designed actually very accessible and uh, that was always, it's always a bonus when something's quite easy and straightforward to work on but going back to the gears, I need to get those gears, the two gears that engage with one another, to give second gear. I somehow need to get them so that they uh, move closer to each other. Look at that. That is second gear there. Look at the gap between this cog and this cog and their engagement dogs. I'm hoping it'll come out on the video barely engaging at all hardly any depth so uh, at least I sort of found a reason and if it is a shimming matter or a bent selector fork I might even get away with reusing the, those gears one or both of them because uh, actually there's not too much in the way of wear or damage on them because the engagement has been so shallow that uh, 
If I can grab some depth to the engagement, I think we'll be in business. So anyway, it's a Friday afternoon. Um, I'm coming up to uh, wrapping up my week. And it's quite a good place to leave it, really, because I've got quite a positive outlook on this. Um, nothing's broken or smashed. There are no gear teeth in the bottom of the casing or anything like that. It's all quite fixable, I would have thought. And uh, it shouldn't be too long before we get it fixed and then finally get that test ride sorted.